They blew up people in their own homes. They poisoned people with gas. They shot children who came to the school on 1st of September. That is only part of terrorist attacks that took place in Russia during Putin's cadence. He says that it's all was done by terrorists, but he does not say that he is probably the mastermind of these terrorists. It all started in September 1999, a series of explosions in residential high-rises, two in Moscow, another one in the Rostov region. 249 dead, 360 wounded. The Russian authorities have stated that all this is the work of terrorists from the North Caucasus. They allegedly planted an explosive based on ammonium nitrate and aluminum powder. The mixture looks literally like sugar. Therefore, the sacks that the attackers left in the basements of houses and in cars parked next to them did not cause any questions from anyone except a resident of Rezan. On September 22, 1999, he noticed several people stowing suspicious sacks into the basement of the house. He called the police who evacuated the residents, took out suspicious bags containing the same explosive that has been used in the three previous explosions. Nikolai Patrushev, head of the FSB at the time, said that these were exercises conducted by the service. Right after this statement by Patrushev, the former Russian spy Alexander Litvinenko suggested that all the explosions in the houses were interconnected and organized by the authorities authorities, and their goal was to sow panic among Russians and make them want a strong ruler, such as Russian Prime Minister Vladimir Putin. The answer was really tough. On September 23, 1999, Russian aircraft began bombing the city of Grozny. Thus began the Second Chechen War. На вызов бандитов власть ответит адекватно, жестко, быстро. Russia wanted revenge for its loss during the first campaign, and they needed the Kaza's belly, a pretext for war. This was the explosion in residential buildings. The day after the invasion, Putin said one of his most famous phrases. He promised to kill terrorists on the eve of the presidential campaign. A few months after the explosions and the start of the Second Chechen War, Putin was elected as a president, and terrorism will be his companion through all his presidential life. Threat of unknown offenders will be a master tool for Kremlin to strengthen its power. The next large-scale terrorist attack took place in October 2002. During the Nord-Ost show in Moscow, terrorists took almost a thousand people hostage for several days. The building was immediately surrounded by Russian special forces. They were not going to negotiate with those who captured the civilians, although, as it became known later, unknown gunmen asked for it. They were ready to release people if Russia left Chechnya. Russian security forces launched gas into the theater. About 40 terrorists and hundreds of hostages lost consciousness. Special forces started the offensive. They shot every terrorist, although they could simply detain them unconscious, find out their motives and then judge. But Putin did not need that. According to various sources, up to 174 people perished from gas poisoning. Nobody told the medics what kind of gas was used. Dr simply did not know what to do with patients. Meanwhile, the authorities blamed the journalists. They showed preparation for the assault live and could disrupt the entire special operation. After the incident, Putin began to clean up the independent media. Channels that were once private have become public. That was the birth of Russian propaganda machine.
Two years later, the media reported on another terrorist attack, this time in North Ossetia, the city of Beslan. It all happened on September 1, 2004. Children with their parents and relatives came to celebrate the beginning of the school year. Terrorists broke into the school. They took more than a thousand hostages. Most of them were children. The attackers were ready to release the hostages if specific people came to negotiate with them. But they never showed up. Russia, as always, did not want negotiations. In two days, security forces launched an assault. Twice they used flamethrowers at the points where hostages were held. Then they started to shoot the school with tanks and cannons. Then the shootout began. During all these actions, more than 300 people were killed and twice as many injured. Authorities say children and adults have died in an explosion of device detonated by terrorists. Independent experts said that none of the explosive devices planted at the school were detonated. After the terrorist attack in Beslan, Putin cancelled the election of local governors. Instead, he carried out reforms that concentrated even more power in his hands. Relatives of the victims have been trying to find out the truth for years. But who will tell them? The Kremlin is even detaining mothers who lost their children in Beslan. For example, these are the women who came to the memorable event in 2016 in t-shirts with the inscription Putin is the executioner of Beslan. Putin is ready to kill, no matter it's a friend or a foe. He wanted to kill again when, in 2022, he decided to openly invade Ukraine. Once again, he used the Kaza's belly. He stated that he was going to protect the so-called People's Republic of Donbass from Ukrainians. Сегодняшние события связаны не с желанием ущемить интересы Украины и украинского народа. Они связаны с защитой самой России от тех, кто взял Украину в заложники. Putin frightens Russians again. He says he decided to kill others to protect his own people. The Kremlin says that if Ukraine attacks Russian territory, Russia will launch even more missile strikes on Ukrainian cities. Ukraine is not attacking. That is why Russia is doing everything itself. First, an oil depot takes off in Belgorod. Then the Russian air defense system works in the Kursk and Bryansk regions. The occupiers who invaded Ukraine know perfectly who is behind these strikes and do not hesitate to tell relatives on the phone. Сказали, что это семь жертв, ну семь пострадавших все-таки есть вот по этой бомбе Климова, А? Это наши хера чат. А зачем наши? You are not misheard. The same thing happened before the invasion of Chechnya. At that time, houses in Moscow were blown up by FSB members. Currently, Russia's territory is being shelled by its own soldiers and all in order for Putin to have a reason for war and to sift a fear among Russians of a mythical threat invented by their terrorist mastermind.